What up, what up, what up? It's Professor L. Peace to the gods, the goddesses, the kings, the queens, and all the children of the Most High. This is Professor L, and I have come back once again to drop that science and resurrect the consciousness of the gods. Now, as I promised, today's lesson, sweet, today's lesson is about lessons. Be warned. He who receives the wisdom of this lecture shall rise in the level of test because of this lecture and the understanding that they will receive. So be warned. I'm going to expose to you how the universe sets up these lessons that you need to learn. You see, you can think that you need to go to a building, a temple, this day, that time. Mm -mm. When the universe is teaching you a lesson, the universe knows you every single cell, every single atom, the speed at which each atom is turning, they know your the universe knows your exact frequency. So the universe knows everything about you because the universe is you. You see, the higher part of you has got it all under control. Now, what the universe does is based on where you are spiritually, that's the general term, but where you are in according to your acastic records because your acastic records keeps all levels of growth documented so now I really gotta stop saying that I'm gonna register something else in my mind so moving forward because of you you have to remember it's always about you that's why you were grab you were brought before this video to understand this level you are ready for this level of knowledge if you understand the lessons that I am presenting to you that means the universe knew you were ready for this introduction because what I give people is an introduction into the ancient wisdom about it Being that the universe knows you, where you are, what, you, what you've what you learned, and what you need to learn, lessons will be set up to help you understand who you are in the form of karma. And not just in karma, but also in the form of instruction. Let me tell you how the universe set me up. The universe kept showing me, because I grew up on the Bible, Galatians 5.22, the nine fruits of the Spirit of God. Notice that number, nine. Numbers are everything. So, to break it down, Galatians 5.22 basically says that the nine God, government, ordinance, the laws that circulate through you, department, the body, the nine fruits in your temple, the nine primary fruit of who you are is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, mildness, self-control. So, you know, I read this, studied it as a kid, you know, came across as a kid, you know, and you think that you come to levels of understanding because you've memorized the scripture. A lot of people fall under that. Big mistake. The scriptures is not about memory. You see, if you're watching this video, that means you're being fed a lesson because a lesson is coming. 
it's like that anytime you open any type of book or anything that relates to wisdom if you choose it and the universe put it in front of you just like this video a lesson's coming be prepared and be warned and I say be warned because for some the lessons are brutal like this one I'm getting ready to share with you so I kept reading this I kept the universe kept showing me Galatians 5 22 and kept saying you know and I'm like at the bottom I was like yo God I got this <laughs> I got this love joy peace especially when I begin to understand the structure of the lesson I got this and then I begin to understand it in terms of how it works with consciousness that each one of the fruit is actually a mindset and feelings hello 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 I'm gonna say it again then each of the nine fruit deal with mindsets love joy and peace begin here long suffering also begins here affects here and then once it affects here it affects what you see outside you so kindness goodness faith mildness and self-control addresses you regaining your balance and what your balance is your balance resides in your first three in the first three fruit which is your power the first three fruit represent high frequency see now i'm breaking down to you the understanding that i knew you know and i'm dropping the science to you and this is how you should talk to god too i know this god don't you see how i'm dropping this science i know this <laughs> So, you know, I was like, I understand, God. You know, the first three fruit is mindsets. Love, the highest frequency that one's mind can be on. Joy, another high frequency. Always be laughing and be joyful. This is high frequency. Peace, meditation, just being loving. Chill, what's up? Oh, yo, be honorable, love, loving, integrity, dignity. This is peace. All of these things resonate in peace. These qualities, to be honorable, to be moral, to be respectful, to be decent. To be loving all those qualities reside in peace hello but then like i said the universe know you need to grow how you doing the universe know you need to grow the universe can give you long suffering long suffering why because it's checking you in a certain area that you need to focus on you need to attend to you need to address that's where long suffering comes in long suffering is going to disturb that love that joy and that peace high frequencies high times long suffering low frequency low time law of rhythm they all the laws work together your job is to understand the laws so now get on oh, i said it again getting back to uh love joy and peace so I'm telling God I know this, you know, so I know that if something goes wrong, long suffering, I need to regain my balance. Kindness, goodness, faith is telling you how to restore your balance so that you can get back into the first three fruit, which is your principles of power. Love, loving frequency. If you, if you resonate on a high frequency of love, it help you manifest all things. That means you look at nobody and say, I hate you for this. I hate you for that. I'm angry. No, that means you have unconditional love for all things. And it's always peace and love to everyone and everything that you see and come across. Don't even kill an ant. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> that's why you see in certain movies, they say, you have certain people say, I do not kill the ant. Please do not step on the ant. <laughs> you know, they like that in the temples. But anyway, uh, so, you know, those nine fruit, I was telling God, I understand that. You know, I got it, God. So God was like, hmm, you got it, huh? I was like, yeah, I got that. You know, yo, you can start giving me something new because, you know, you keep showing me that. I got that. He's like, you got it, huh? All right. Since the universe knows you, and, you know, at the time, like me, I thought I knew myself, this lesson was set up. And it was set up so sweet. Mm, 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 mm. This lesson was set up so sweet God trapped me so well that if he was literally facing me on the earth, this force, we would have had to have fisticuffs. That's how mad I was that I realized what was happening. Let me tell you the story. One day I was driving a taxi. I used to drive the taxi. I really loved it. 
I got a chance to like meet a lot of people. You know, as long as you keep people state of mind, it's not a bad which you know, some idiots will come along. But skipping all that, uh, a brother gets in the ride, you know, and I'm talking to the brother, young brother. You know, he's talking to me, but he's talking to a chick on the phone. And I drive him across town. Fed comes to $16.30. <laughs> you see, the numbers are the key. $16.30. Knowledge, equality, understanding, cipher. The brother turns out his car didn't have the money on it. Hmm. You see, so now all that i am in terms of like you know who i am where i grew up brooklyn you know all of that's now coming into play now because you know as far as i'm concerned you know i was in virginia a little town called norfolk in the state of virginia but you know i'm from brooklyn and you know when you're from new york man you know you're not trying to have nobody get over on that paper not coming from new york it might happen in other places, man, but like, you know, New York, you no, know, New York is like, you know, we're going to get that paper. So this brother didn't have my paper. And now, you know, like my whole temperament has changed now because now, you know, I'm thinking like, yo, you was playing me from the jump. You see, my mind is going into gangster mode. Yo, you was playing me from the jump, dude. And I'm getting that Brooklyn thing. You know, yo, nah, son. Mm -mm. <laughs> you got, yo, yo, I need my money, son. You know, so I was like, yo, who that chick you talking to on the phone, man? Tell her you need this money, you downstairs. He was like, he looking at me because he didn't expect that one. So he was like, yo, uh, yo, uh, hold on, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you, yo, you got, you got some money? Turned out she ain't had no money. So now I'm hot, man, I'm hot. I'm hot, I'm hot. I am a Sagittarian and, yo, I'm about to flame on. All I'm thinking about now is just turning around and crushing this dude's face. But you know, it's like, I like driving a taxi and there's cameras everywhere in the taxi. For an organization I was driving for before Uber and Lyft came. Crushed all that. But, so, you know, I eventually just, the dude gave me his number, you know, the rah, rah, blah, 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 foolishness, bull crap. I took the number, I knew I was never going to see the dude again, so I'm hot going to my next customer. I am hot. I am hot. You know, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but it's all good because now I understand. So I get to my next customer. Like, you know, my mindset is like, you know, now, you know, I'm just straight Brooklyn. You know, I'm straight Brooklyn in this taxi. And I'm like, yo, I wish somebody would try to take some money from me. I want somebody to get in this taxi and think they're not going to pay me for my next fare. You know, I'm like, yo, my fist is all balled up, all tight. I'm like, this is how I'm going to drive this taxi for the rest of the day. You know, it's like, this ain't going to happen again. I'm gonna make people pay me in advance getting up in this taxi. So I'm just going into this straight gangster mindset. Crush, kill, and destroy for the next person who think they're gonna rob me of my paper. Not realizing God that loves you is all things. So I'm looking for the next customer, hoping that it's like, you know, you know, like, you know, possibly two younger guys, man, you know. You think they're gonna rob me or something, man? So I can like, you know, deal with this sixteen dollars and thirty cents situation, man. Just transfer it into this situation. <laughs> so I pull up on the spot there, and I'm looking for like the customers, you know. And I see an old lady sitting in a wheelchair. So I'm not thinking old lady in a wheelchair, and I'm hoping to myself that this is not the customer. Because I am not in a dealing with the old lady in the wheelchair mindset. I'm in a gangster mindset. I want, yo. <laughs> you gotta understand. So. Uh, so as I'm looking over her. Because, you know, she's waving. When she sees the taxi, hi. I'm like. <laughs> Looking over her, because I'm knowing, yo, please, this is not the one, but I know it's her. So I finally 
back the taxi up as I drove past it because the apartment building had two sides. So I'm hoping like maybe the person I'm looking for is on the other side. So I'm driving past you to this other side because I'm hoping you're not the customer, but she was the customer. So I pull out this and now I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm not in this nurturing mindset. I'm not in this loving. That's how I was driving a taxi. Unconditional love with every customer that got into the taxi as part of practicing staying on high frequency. Hold no, harbor nothing against anyone. Unconditional love on any human being that you see and that law will then attract that law in them. Oh my goodness, you got to know these laws. I'm teaching you. So I pull up on the old lady and I get out the car and I'm like, my whole spirit is like now just like, oh, I'm like straight gangster, yo, whip somebody behind type mode. I'm not in this taking care of this, showing love to this old lady. So she's like, hi. <laughs> I said, how you doing, mom? But you know, I'm looking down, man, because I'm still not in this mindset. I'm like, no, God, no, no, no. And then when I said, no, God, no, no, no. You see, I said, intelligence, I said, I, what is I? Intelligence was telling God, no. And see, when I realized right then, right then, Galatians 5.22, you see, I was having a loving day, making good money until 4.30. I was getting off at 6. 4.30, this brother situation happened. Once again, look at the time, look at the numbers. Culture, point, cipher, understanding. So after him, and he done changed my whole energy from this unconditional love with everybody getting a taxi, yo, they, everybody loved me when I was driving that taxi because I had unconditional love. I did a few other things like praying for people, power prayer, heal people's situations, all type of stuff like that. You know, practicing the sciences. But, uh, you know, I don't talk much about that. But, you know, they knew me. You know, so everybody loved Professor L. You know, they were seeing me in the flesh and actually hear me drop the science in the taxi while I was doing a lot of other things. So this brother... You know, with the situation with the money. And now God has got me in front of this old lady. And when I, and I said to myself, oh God, no. But the minute I said, oh God. It was like God said, yes. <laughs> you called? <laughs> because I realized right then and there, it was a setup. You see, when you know the gods within you, you'll know the lessons when they come. I was so angry at God. Oh, oh. Because what God was demanding of me was for me to practice Galatians 5.22. I was in a loving state of mind until that brother took that, hit me for that fair. And I'm driving him over here to some house, man, where he get ready to get pleasurized, but you just took my money in this process. I should have sent him in that house with a black eye, but, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> That's the old side of me. So, when I realized that I was so angry, so angry, because I realized God had me trapped in a lesson. You are going to, you told me you know Galatians 5.22? Well, show me how you can go through long suffering after it has interrupted your love, joy, and your peace. And show me how you can demonstrate mildness, kindness, faith, self-control. You see, when the God's teaching you a lesson, they do not play. I was hot. When I, and then I got hotter when I realized the lesson. That made me even madder. Sagittarian. <laughs> Do you see how all this works together? You see, you got to understand. When you come to this third dimensional realm, the gods want you to come to know yourself so that this becomes a game you're playing, not a trial and a struggle. 
but you're gonna go through trials and struggle if you don't know thy higher self. I was hot. My ego was aflamed. I am not in the mindset to take care of ladies. I need somebody who's going to try to take this money so I can put this fist through their face. That's the type of hot I was. God said, oh, I know how hot you are. I want to see how well you know Galatians 5.22. <laughs> Mr. Karate Man. <laughs> My wife said that one time. <laughs> she made me even hotter. <laughs> oh my God. That's another story. I hope I remember to share it with you. Never know the role the wife plays in your life. Don't forsake thy wife. But, uh, so once I realized it was a lesson and that Jesus or God, nobody was coming down there so I could really, really talk to them about, you know, this is not the proper time for lessons. <laughs> when, no, you see, when they set up that lesson, the timing is perfect. So I had to sit there and reverse my energy. Because that's what this was all about. If you read Galatians 5.22, it addresses reversing your energy after a trial. Because it's during the trial that we make some of our worst crucial decisions. Hello. Somebody say, uh, how the pastor used to say? Amen. Because <laughs> you know this is the truth. You see, I'm about dropping that sign so that you understand it. It's right there in the Bible. But you know, it's broken down into stories for you to understand. And like I said, when you read it, you just memorize the scripture. You don't know that this is happening repeatedly <laughs> until you get it. God had me trapped in that situation and I was ready. I was so, I was mad about my money. And then I was mad about the lesson. <laughs> and God was like, well, you might as well get over all that madness because this old lady still needs to get to where she's got to go. But I was kind of settling down, but that made me even matter when I got that. Because, you know, when you can hear the voice, watch that video. When you hear the voice and you know the voice, that's what God told me. He's like, I know you, man. But you said you know Galatians 5, 22. How about putting that old lady in the car? Who? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta relive that moment like I did. Mm, mm, mm. See, when your gun got you in check, it's checkmate. Know that thy higher self know you and is superior. This is where submission comes in. Submission. I'm gonna have another lecture on submission. Submission is in the lessons placed before you. You can sit there on your knees all day. <gasps> God, I submit, I submit. You're going to be like, well, really? Okay. We're going to see. Why? Based on your word becoming flesh. Watch the video. <laughs> you see, there's a lot of lessons based on your word. Sometimes it's best to keep thy mouth shut. And trust me, if anybody knows that, I know that because I am a teacher by nature. This is a long video. Oh my God. I really hate making videos past nine minutes and I cannot stick to nine minutes. But I know y'all are going to watch this one all the way through. So anyway, Galatians 5.22. The lessons. God caught me. I had to drive the only... And guess what? Let me tell you. God wasn't finishing the lesson. I walk over to the old lady, getting ready to push her toward the car because she's in the wheelchair. She says, wait, Sonny, hold on. I have some bags inside. And I wish I could get up from this chair to show you how she walked. When she got up from her chair, and remember, while this is happening, my spirit is slowly reluctantly begrudgingly transferring into unconditional love but it was a hard 
transformation at the time. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, it's like you, know, you want to go to war, <laughs> but you're being directed to the daycare center. It's like, what? Daycare center? <laughs> Y'all really ready to go crush skulls. So, it was a hard transition. But you see, that was the lesson. The universe had trapped you right dead in the center of the lesson. Because they want to see what you're all about. You see, your words, your words will transfer into life experiences. Be careful what you wish for. God said, oh, so you think you know Galatians 5.22? Well, we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see. And they dropped that lesson in front of me, a complete transferring shift of energy in the middle of a situation. I was mad. I was mad. And God says, oh, yeah, take care of this old lady. Oh, let me get to, she walked very, she walked like one inch with each foot. One inch. I am not lying. Each foot. When I saw it, uh, it's, oh, she walked like this. The first thought came to my mind. It's another lecture. God likes to play games. Mm, because God does like to play games. God loves to play games when it's you know, helping you to, to grow and learn yourself. When you understand that this is a game, you'll laugh. But while you are going through the trial and the turmoil, mm -mm, while you're going through the lesson, pure hell. The universe want to see. You see, lots of times, you've, I know you've heard the expression, it's not what you're going through. Then guess where that come from? It's how you handle what you're going through. Hmm. Because what you're going through was already set up in your temple. Hello. You gotta know this. Every lesson that you're going through, everything that you're going through is based on you. Why you're here, <laughs> what you need to learn, where you're going. Destiny. So the lessons are already set up. They just waiting for the times to whip them on you. <laughs> I did tell you that when the universe set up a lesson, this lesson is set up, man, by the master of the master of the masters because they know you, you know, the chessboard only has like 64 squares. <laughs> you are eternal. <laughs> and they know your entire eternity. <laughs> yes, they do who you are, where you're going, where you came from in the last life, where you're going in the next one. All this is already laid out. The one doing the discovering is you. Resurrection of the gods. Lots of times when I finish my videos and then I reflect on them after I watch them, I'll be saying, oh, you should have said this, you should have said that, you forgot to add this, you forgot to add that. So that's what's going through my mind right now as I'm sitting there about to close out this video. But I am sorry for taking up 28 minutes of your time. I know y'all got like a lot of things y'all got to do. But like when the science comes to me, resurrection of the gods, it's really, it's really uh, authorized by the ancestors because it is the ancestors trying to awaken you to their presence within you. This is Professor L. And like I said, do not come to play, I come to drop that science. This is Resurrection of the Gods TV. And I come to resurrect the consciousness of the gods. Peace to the gods, the goddesses, the kings, the queens, and all the children of the Most High. And I'm out.